mode conversions, what are they and why do we care? During your time as a level two, you may have come across a picture that looks like this. This is from the Kraut Kramer book. This is a graph of what happens when you impart sound in a shear wave on a vertical surface. Huh? On the bottom of the graph, I've got written inspection angle. This is the refracted angle of your beam. So in conventional UT, this might be 45, 60 or 70 in phased array, it could be sort of anywhere sort of between 40 and 75 degrees. And then above that is the incident angle on a vertical flaw. If you are shooting at 60 degrees, let's say, and you have a vertical flaw, like a notch in a block, what's happening is even though your beam is at 60 degrees, you're actually hitting that flaw at 30 degrees. And what happens is we've got a really weak shear wave return at that angle. Why? because most of the shear wave is converting into long waves. Eclipse Beam Tool is totally awesome at illustrating this. Here is a 60 degree beam hitting the notch. It will draw the reflection and the mode conversions. We're gonna take a closer look. We already know that the reflected shear wave is going to be really weak because we're losing 90% of it due to mode conversion. So I'm gonna cross that out. Most of the sound is converted to a long wave, reflecting off the face of the notch, and then again off of the back wall. But at the back wall, that long wave mode converts back into a shear wave. With photoelastic visualization, we can see both these mode converted waves coming up from the notch. Let's adjust the contrast, clear things up. At the top, there's the long wave traveling faster, and you can also see the different wavelength or the distance between the dark and light parts compared to the shear wave. Here I've got a block with a notch in it. I'm gonna go for the worst one. We're gonna use the four millimeter notch on the bottom of this, which is about 20 millimeters high. When I move the probe back and forth like this, and I go into the TCG calibration and just kind of pull the notch all the way through the beams, you can see that right at around 60 degrees, we just kind of lose everything. And that is this part of the graph right here. That is us losing 90% of the reflected shear wave energy but by the nature of a TCG calibration, it's gonna pull those low amplitude signals right back up to 80%, so everything's the same. So if I verify the TCG, here's what you see. Huh? So there's actually two interesting things happening here with mode conversion. Number one is just that sensitivity drop due to the fact that it mode converted, so we get a huge boost in the TCG at around 60 degrees. Secondly, that little bend is really interesting. So what's happening here is that at the lower angles, we're basically getting a response from the corner trap. If I draw a smeary gradient thing up the middle of this chart to approximate the width of a 60 degree beam, even though the outskirts of the beam are weaker than the middle, they don't mode convert as much. So the angles off 60 actually produce a stronger shear wave reflection. That's why the echo dynamic does this little jog at 60 degrees. The loudest part isn't lined up with the corner trap. And this is why we care, because when you're doing weld inspection and you find a surface connected flaw, like a crack or a lack of fusion or lack of penetration, you may find that the indication doesn't actually peak at the surface. And there's really not much you can do to calibrate this out at 60 degrees, at around those angles. What you're gonna find is that that signal is gonna drift either into the first leg or into the second leg. With phased array, scanning at a fixed offset, you may just choose to design the scan plan so that you don't hit the root at 60 degrees all the time and kind of avoid this problem altogether. I actually don't agree with this entirely. The problem is that you're making an assumption that everything you're trying to find at that root position is gonna be straight up and down. And as we saw on the graph, just a slight five degree tilt can make all the difference. Another interesting thing is because of this effect, you can actually reverse engineer a calibration to tell whether it was done on a hole or a notch. If you take the signal and you just actually have the probe in the air, you don't even have to have it on the block. Just take it, turn the gain way up or adjust the palette. What you'll see is if it's done on a notch, you see this huge boost on the upper part of the S scan. Here you can see it kicking in right around 60 degrees. I think it's really important to understand the limitations of the physics that we're applying when we do ultrasonic testing and a good understanding of what mode conversion is and what effects it's going to have on your screen is really important. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.